Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. It is May 18th, 2022. It's about 9.45 in the morning and the reason I'm making a video today is to talk about what happens if you are assigned on the short side of either a put credit spread or a call credit spread early. And I wanted to walk through the steps of how to handle an early assignment in your account, particularly if you don't have the collateral to take on the stock, or if you just don't want to take on the stock and you want to close the position out and move on to something else and just sort of deal with your max loss accordingly. <clears throat> so you guys get a sneak peek into my other main trading account with Tastyworks right here. You can see all of the positions that I'm holding or more specifically, all of the tickers that I'm currently holding. And I'm definitely bag holding a lot of um, really in the money, long put options, sorry, short put options that aren't doing well, but I've been selling a bunch of calls against them, kind of like what I talked about in one of my last videos for Twitter. In any event, this is my main trading account with Tastyworks. This is the second largest account that I have. And maybe someday I'll go through all of my positions, but right now you can just sort of see what's available. But <clears throat> I want to talk about Google specifically because I had a put credit spread on Google and I was assigned shares overnight at the 2725 strike, I believe. And I want to talk about how, to, how I manage these things. And so typically what happens when you get assigned on any stock in Tastyworks early, they're going to let you know by sending you an email. So at 6.13 this morning, Eastern Standard Time, I... Uh, got an email from Tastyworks that told me that I was assigned um, the 2725 put in Google. So now I have 100 shares of Google in my account. Um, and this is just a cursory, you know, let inf informational email. It doesn't tell you what to do. Um, it doesn't tell you to do anything here, but obviously just check your positions and adjust accordingly, and et cetera. So Tastyworks does a really good job of sending you emails about this stuff. If you don't have enough collateral in your account <clears throat> or if your account goes into a um, margin buying power deficit, Tastyworks is also going to let you know pretty immediately. It's usually, it come, this email comes a little bit closer to open. So this, as you can see right here, this is about an hour and 45 minutes later. So these are automated emails. They'll send them to you to let you know that there's stuff going on in your account that you need to pay attention to. Required maintenance calls are really important to watch. If you get them, you need to act on them almost immediately. Tastyworks is going to give you a little less than two business days to deal with it. So I was assigned overnight on May 17th. Today's May 18th. I have to satisfy this call by May 19th, which is tomorrow. I'm actually going to take care of it today. But you can't let these things linger. It's really important because if you do fail to satisfy the margin maintenance call, <clears throat> Tastyworks has the has the right to take action in your account on their behalf because all they care about is managing their own risk. They don't really care what's going on in your account. So pay attention to these emails. They're really important. And if you have also signed up for the um, text messaging services, Tastyworks is also going to send you text messages about it. I've already gotten like five text messages from them today. So that's that. If your account goes into what I guess Tastyworks deems as an excessive risk, they're going to send you a third email that will tell you that. And this is the first time I've actually gotten an email like this since they've changed ownership. Um, so this is new to me, but it's still just as important to pay attention to. They're basically telling you that if I don't do it, telling me, if I don't do anything in my account, then they're going to take action on my behalf. So... When you log into Tastyworks and you have um, a margin call, you're going to see a little exclamation point in orange over here. And if you click on that, it just says cash notices, cash account notices in call. Another indicator is that your options buying power is going to be a deficit. And so as you can see, this is a pretty substantial deficit as a result of the Google assignment. Right now, my cash balance is negative $126,000, which... It's not great because I had quite a bit of money in this account that has now been taken out because of the Google assignment. So this is what it looks like right here. So I have 100 shares of stock of Google, and then I also have a long leg open um, 
that was my protection. So what I'm going to do in Tastyworks is I'm going to close each of these positions individually, and then I'm going to show you how I calculate what my, quote, lo personal loss would have been. If you recall about put credit spreads, typically when you enter into a put credit spread, your the max loss is defined, which is usually the width of the um, put credit spread or the call credit spread. So in this case, this was a $10 wide put credit spread. My short strike was at $27.25. My long strike is at $27.15. So I knew going into this trade that my potential max loss would be $1,000. So there are different ways that you can manage how to close this out. Um, in Tastyworks, you can close both legs together and you can go close position. And it's going to put you somewhere about the middle, the midpoint, and you just need to lock it in and then review and send. So I actually um, have had not super great experience trying to close both of the legs at the same time. Um, one thing to know about Google is it is a little less liquid than normal. Um, as you can see, there's no activity over here. This is the little volume indicator on the website. Um, so it's not as if like the 2700s would be super high volume right now. Those are super in the money. And plus the expiration is for May 27th, which is, uh, not this Friday, but next. So I'm going to close these individually and then I'm going to calculate the credits, loss, et cetera, et cetera. So close position. Sometimes Tastyworks gets a little finicky on the website, so I usually just refresh and start over. There we go. All right, so the midpoint is fluctuating quite a bit. I'm just gonna lock this in and try to close. And then I'm going to close the shares and there's no point in me trying to wait around and see how the rest of the day is going to go um, the calculation would be about roughly the same since this is trying to just close the spread um, together okay so the sh obviously the shares filled right away i was just trying to get get them off my um off the books and it's helped out my buying power a bit but not quite enough so i still have a deficit right here so I'm going to get out of this. I'm just going to recenter re it. Usually what I do to do that is I'll just click in the, in the little lock button and then unclick it and it'll put you back to about midpoint. And that also closed. So we're going to go to the activity and take a look. Sold to close 100 shares of Google. Sold to close the long leg of a Google put credit spread. So this is actually... I was trying to piece together the history of this trade. I tend to trade in tickers as the market moves up and down, up and down. So there's a lot of history in Google since the beginning of the year. But as far as this particular put credit spread is concerned, it um, is a little bit more focused. So I have collected a lot of credit on Google over the year, about $622. But that was a combination of call spreads and put spreads that I have opened and closed or closed and rolled or uh, uh, reestablished after I closed one for profit, etc. So um, I had to go through this this morning to take a look at sort of the history of the position to see what I could piece together. And it looks like I can do that pretty easily. So um, the colors don't really mean anything other than to help me identify like what went where and how. So for this particular put credit spread, I opened it in on April 5th. And I started off with my default, which is usually $5 wide. And I Sold it for $135, and then I rolled it on April 14th, so nine days later. And then for the roll, I collected $222. And so after fees, the total credit collected on the position is $351.99. So just make a bookmark of $351.99 as total credit collected. So we can zoom in here to take a look at this activity. So to calculate personal max loss, I was debited $272,505 from my account. 
when I sold back the stock, I got $228,213. When I sold back the long put at the 2715 strike, I got $42,815. Accounting for fees. Okay, so this is just the quick calculation. Um, this is the debit, uh, the initial put assignment, put option assignment. This is selling the shares for um, at market value. This is selling back the long option. So right now, the total loss is uh, $1,483.44. If you recall, I collected $351.99 in credit. Credit collected, sold long option, sold shares back, assignment. So the total loss that I took on this trade is $1,131.45. This is $131.45 greater than the width of the put credit spread, and that can be attributed specifically to selling back each of those positions individually. If you want to get closer to the width of the credit spread, you can try to sell them back together at the same time. Um, but you might not get exactly the width. In this case, I took a $131 greater loss than I um, initially planned for. But in the grand scheme of things, getting my account back to normal is far more important than $131. And so this is something that I was prepared and planned to do. But in the past, when I've taken early assignment and, and have had to close credit spreads, I've gotten them a little bit closer, closer to the wits of the strikes. Um, and it has worked out fine. If I really want to get greedy and um, sort of rationalize with myself that I didn't necessarily take $131, um, $1,131 loss. I could, you know, put all of the credit here, 622, and it brings it down to $861.44. That's, I mean, it's not a big deal at the end of the day for me, uh, which number that I choose or decide to focus on. I will probably continue trading in Google, but maybe not today. I might wait until the share split. Um, I might move on to something else. I might just worry about the current positions that I have open. So that's it. That is how you handle a early assignment in your account in Tastyworks, particularly when you don't have the funds to deal with the collateral. So as you can see now, my cash balance is back my buying power is, is back. It's not a super great amount of buying power, um, but that's just because I got a bunch of positions that are buried right now. And I will figure out what to trade now. Now that this account is uh, somewhat back to normal, it'll take a little while for this little uh, marker to go away. I'm sure Tastyworks is going to do some review on their side um, by the end of the day and... Um, confirm that the call has been cleared and that the excessive risk has been removed and that the account is back to normal. If you have any questions about early assignment, obviously you know where to reach me. You can email me at tiffanytradesoptions at gmail.com. Um, that's probably the best and easiest way to get a hold of me. If you want to see what I'm trading daily in, in this account, in my eTrade account, my Thinkorswim account, and my other small Tiffany Trades Options account, you can join my Patreon, and um, attached to that Patreon is a Discord server. The primary purpose of the Patreon is is the Discord. I post my um, trading activity on a monthly basis, on the f usually around the first of the month or the end of the month, depending on um, which day it falls on, um, to the Patreon. So you can see all of my spreadsheets and see how I'm doing every month, and I give you uh, monthly re recaps. But... Um, in the Discord itself, I'm just posting my trades. They're, they're not trade alerts. I'm not telling anybody what to trade. I'm not asking anyone to follow me. I definitely don't want that responsibility, but I love giving people insights into how I trade and how my mind works and why, why I do things the way that I do them. Um, and plus, there's a great community of people in there who are awesome and who are just like, you know, people that I consider friends now who I've um, really enjoyed getting to know and really, um, really glad to have them there. And so um, I think just a good group of people and 
So that link is in the description of all of my videos. Just join Tiffany Trades Options Patreon. Um, but that's it. So um, early assignment on a put credit spread is not as terrifying as it may initially seem. Just remember to um, manage your risk accordingly. Pay attention to the amount of credit you collect on all of your positions. And it'll all be okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.